Today, I've got a really exciting episode for you because we're going to do a deeper dive into my brand new book, The Longevity Paradox. More specifically, I'm going to tell you all about how you can tweak the existing plant paradox diet so that you can live a long, healthy life. But before we dive in, I've got a question for you. Are there any health topics you'd like to know more about? If so, reply in the comments and let me know what you're curious about. After all, I created this channel for you and I want to make sure you're benefiting from it. So if there's anything you want to know, go ahead and leave a comment below. And now let's move on to the main event, today's video. So what's the secret to eating for longevity? Well, the good news, if you've been following along with the plant paradox for a while, you're off to a great start because a lot of what I've got to say hasn't changed. Seriously, you should still be eating plenty of leafy greens and the purpose of food is still to get olive oil into your mouth. And of course, lectin-rich foods are still off the menu. Sorry, wheat lovers. But like I said, there are some pretty noticeable changes in the longevity paradox diet too. After all, one of the most amazing things about scientific research is how quickly it advances. And I want to keep you up to date, even if it means proving my previous books wrong. So every time I release a book, I'm excited to share updated information that'll improve your life for decades to come. Now, if you really want to understand the ins and outs of these tweaks, I suggest picking up a copy of The Longevity Par Paradox for yourself. It's in bookstores now and on the New York Times bestseller list its first week out. And watch this video all the way to the end. That way you can take the first steps towards longevity now while you're waiting for the longevity paradox to arrive in your mailbox. So without further ado, let's dig into my top three longevity diet tweaks. Number one, to live longer, stress yourself out. Now I'm not talking about actual stress. I'm talking about fasting. Now I know I touch on fasting in the plant paradox, but it turns out leading researchers have found that when it comes to your longevity, stressing out your system by going hungry really helps. And don't worry, I've figured out ways you can actually eat, yep, even on fasting days. So you'll never feel like you're starving. After all, life's not worth living if you feel deprived all the time. I want you to enjoy your long, healthy life, even on fasting days. That's why I laid out a fasting protocol in the longevity paradox to optimize your health while minimizing those feelings of deprivation. It starts with fast mimicking days. There are five of these in a month and you want to do them together. And even on those five days, you can eat up to 900 calories a day, in fact you're just going to be following a vegan diet all those days and eating plenty of leafy greens, nuts, and healthy fats. Once or twice a week, you've also got brainwashing days. And this is the best kind of fast because it's about doing it when you're sleeping. Well, mostly when you're sleeping. The trick to these fasts, which you'll do once or twice a week, is skipping dinner or eating ridiculously early and letting your brain have a chance to wash as you sleep. The next day, go ahead and eat as normal. Now you can also add in some optional calorie restricted days where you eat around 600 calories a day. Again, keep it vegan if possible, but that's not required. And on the rest of your days, go ahead and eat the foods you enjoy, as long as they're plant paradox friendly, of course. Oh, but there's one thing you should be aware of, and that's change number two. I've gotten a little stricter on animal protein this time around, especially when that protein comes from land animals. To make it simple, I want you to focus on eating no more than one three ounce serving of animal protein per day. That could mean three or four eggs during the day, or a salad with canned wild caught tuna at lunch or a small piece of grass-fed beef at dinner. Need a frame of reference? Your serving of meat should be no larger, no larger than the palm of your hand or a deck of cards. So even if it's grass-fed, that gargantuan ribeye is a total no-go. But you can have a piece of it. 
Now, not only am I really buckling down on the serving size of animal protein, but like I said, I'm getting really strict about how much meat and poultry you eat. You know, things like pastured chicken, grass-fed beef, and yep, even prosciutto, one of my favorites. In fact, I encourage you to eat meat no more than once a week. The rest of the time, stick to wild-caught seafood and A2 dairy, or go completely vegetarian. That's always an option. Now, if you're someone who eats dairy, make sure you're eating Parmesan cheese. Not only is it delicious, but it's loaded in spermidine. That's a compound with incredible longevity boosting potential. It's found in things like aged cheeses, mushrooms, and legumes. Yes, the same legumes that were super off limits in the plant paradox. Which brings me to change number three. For a long life, eat legumes, especially lentils. They're super rich in spermidine, which is why you'll see quite a few lentil-based recipes in the longevity paradox. Of course, I did sneak some of them into phase three recipes in the cookbook, but at this point, you'll see them show up more and more. But you'll notice those lentil recipes all have one thing in common. They're made with pressure cooked lentils. Eden brand available at Whole Foods is great because theirs actually come canned and pressure cooked. Or you can pressure cook dried lentils yourself. And it's not just lentils that are suddenly on the yes list. Black beans, chickpeas, and zuki beans, and even peas are all on that list too, as long as they're pressure cooked. But please note, even though it's technically a legume, peanuts are not a food you should eat, no matter how you cook them. But if you want a bowl of bean chili or lentil soup, there's absolutely no reason to say no. Just make sure to say yes to pressure cooking first and drizzle it with plenty of olive oil. After all, one thing that has not changed is the purpose of food. It's still to get olive oil in your mouth. Now, those aren't the only changes you can make to live a long, healthy life. There are also lifestyle tweaks to consider. From shaking up your sleep hygiene routine, to eating and fasting for brain health, to tweaking the way you exercise. And if you're a marathon runner, this one's extra important. But if you're already on the Plant Paradox plan and you wanna kickstart your longevity, I suggest using those three little diet tweaks as a jumping off point. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised because not only will they leave you satisfied, but you'll start noticing that you feel healthier almost right away. And feeling those changes for yourself are the best way to keep motivated and to stay on the healthy track. So you live even longer and you feel better in your old age. Personally, I'm hoping to still be sharing life-changing health information 20, 30, even 40 years from now. And I'm excited to see how the information I'll share in the longevity paradox will help you for decades to come. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you and your longevity.